Well, we'd like to welcome back all listeners and viewers to the podcast. I hope you had a very good week to pursue holiness. In our last podcast, we spoke about be holy for I am holy, meaning God is holy. And I don't know how that looked like in your daily life uh, this past week. But Christian, <laughs> after we talked about this matter, wow, the Lord really brought more light into my living regarding what is holiness and it was quite exposing this week. I don't know. How are you doing these days? <laughs> well, I think to have fellowship on that word is really good and very, um, very necessary. Yeah. So that it really uh, gets into our, in our being. Right. And uh, I can just say since our last fellowship, yeah, the Lord has also uh, encouraged me to, to pursue the holiness in the personal life. Yeah. And also in the family life and um, uh, to really pull us all together this way, right? That we right. really um, pursue it together. That is actually mm -hmm. the best way to do it. Yeah. And uh, have that impact on each other rather right. than another kind of impact. Yeah, exactly. Right. The two verses that has been kind of ringing through me since our last podcast is the one you brought up was Hebrews 12, 14, where it says, pursue holiness right and then the other verse that i brought it was second corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 and where it says perfecting holiness in the fear of god right i i think it's like you said it's not always so active it's not top of mind and i think when we ended that podcast we spoke about in the holy priesthood on the on the hat right on the hat right. the top was written in gold right and uh, what did it say? <laughs> Holiness unto the Lord, right? Exactly, right? And that was the top of mind for all of the priests. And yeah. it's a good reminder for us to spend some time in this. Because right. you know, for these last episodes, if we, if we consider all the episodes we spoke about regarding the offerings, the spiritual sacrifices, the practice of the priesthood, every offering that we spoke about was really with the aim of making us holy, because mm -hmm. God is holy, right? How can the priests enter into the most holy place if they have not been washed, cleansed, sanctified, and made holy? Right. And for us today, if we are going to serve God in this kind of a way, then it is a requirement for us to get into and experience in Christ is all of the different offerings. Right. Guys, just like the warning that we saw, Aaron's sons, they were trained and even in the way of the priesthood. And but when they went to bring an offering to God the Father, what happened to them? They offered strange fires and God judged them immediately right there and they were burned up. And so for us today, how can we expect to approach God if we live such an unholy life? Or as we began to bring out last week, this matter of is it common or is it natural right. right and i think this is the more subtle area that i think today we need to spend more time is you know what does that look like in our daily life what do you mean by a common living or a natural life right uh, i think it's clear with the sinful things that would defile us but what about all of these things that we call common right yeah i think it's good that we talk about this today and I think it, it's really crucial to to understand that God is not interested mm -hmm. in um, just having some priests who are holy for the few hours that we come together. Exactly. Uh, this is this is actually really not sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, it's really necessary that we come together. We should not miss the meetings and easily. We should really make an effort mm -hmm. to come yeah. together, especially in these last days. I feel. If you run the race alone in these days, it's a dangerous thing to do because right. Satan is really fighting hard to get anyone he can to devour yeah, him. For sure. And uh, so we should really make an effort. All of us yeah. come right. together, meet with the saints, really yeah. to pursue holiness together. It is, uh, it is something we, we really can help each other to yeah. go on. In, right. uh, in the sanctification. And yeah. I like it how Peter mentions it. He said, uh, he, in 1 Peter 1.15, he, 
he who called you is holy right and god is holy all the time it's not it's not when you see him he's holy when you don't see him <laughs> he's different now he right. is holy yeah and then he says you also be holy yes. and then he adds in all your conduct not just mm -hmm. in your conduct but in all your conduct and oh. that is a real challenge yes right when we come together of course we want to turn to the spirit Right. You don't want to just speak loosely. Mm -hmm. But last night I was with my family and we did a day trip, a day trip, and then we went uh, for dinner into a restaurant. Mm -hmm. And while we sat there in the restaurant, everyone's ordering food and, and we had a great day together. Yeah. Then the Lord reminded me, how will you speak now? Mm -hmm. will you speak now like in a way only, oh, I'm with my family and we just chit chat about anything. Mm -hmm. Or will you speak now? And as you would speak, if the saints were at this table from the church, yeah. right? Is there is there a different way? Are you exercising more mm -hmm. unto holiness? Yeah. When you're yeah. having lunch with the saints on Sunday after the meeting, because I'm very conscious. Wow, well, I'm <laughs> here for the edification. I'm not here just to entertain yeah. anyone. Yeah. And how is it then when you're with your own family in a restaurant, sometime during the week? Are you still exercising to mm -hmm. speak through the spirit and exercising unto holiness? Yeah. And that was a good experience where the Lord reminded me, hey, <laughs> don't don't treat this as a common situation. Right. But pursue holiness. And when we see it that way, the situations are never over. They are all the time. A new and present, right? Yeah, right. And when you go to Second Peter chapter three, verse eleven, the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. What manner of person we ought to be in right. conduct and godliness. So you're right, Christian. It's not just for those few hours when we're together with the saints in the meeting, but it is really every part of our daily life, right? You talked about the the, the family outing. Um, you just reminded me, even in our family outing, because um, my uh, younger daughter is in town for just a few weeks before she returns back to Germany, and uh, we didn't get a chance to do a family trip. We often like to take family trips, and uh, once a year at least, but this year we haven't been able to do it, and her time was so limited. Anyways, we went on a short trip. It was two days. Uh, we went away, and uh, but... You're right. During that two days together, what is it like? Right. right. Um, and, you know, I would have to say when you're with your family, these are the ones that you're closest with. That is where we tend to just be common and natural. And we don't even realize it because we're so comfortable with our, our wives and our children. And, and you're right. It's very easy to just talk freely. Um, and that when you talk freely, that opens the door for the enemy to come in to not only be common, but then eventually something right. happens and then we then we get upset and then we are now defiled. We right. Holy. Right. So it is definitely an exercise. And um, I was glad that, um, you know, we talked about this because it needs to be top of mind and especially with those who are closest with. Right. This week, um, uh, Sharon and I, my, my wife and I, we were working on a gospel track uh, because, you know, my youngest daughter, she, you know, she heard from one of the brothers there in Germany saying, hey, we need this finished in English by the weekend. And uh, so my wife said, yeah, yeah, we can get it done. No problem. And so she and my younger daughter are working on it. And but they needed me to be involved. And so I got called in. And so we started working on it. And, um, you know, when you're working on it, you're doing the Lord's work. And we all have really good ideas. And we all think we have a way to say it. And and then you bring that together. And uh, I think with, you know, over time, as we're talking to each other inwardly, I started to, uh, okay, this is not very sanctified because we're we're getting frustrated and we're not getting mad so to say but but inwardly you're getting frustrated and then mm -hmm. our conversation becomes a little bit more terse and and then eventually it comes to a point where ah this is not right this is not good and and we actually had to stop 
and I had to take care of something else. And my daughter had to do something else. And we all kind of split off. And during that splitting off, the Lord spoke to me. Are you touching this track with unholy hands? In this case, just common hands, natural hands. Are you touching it in that way? And the Lord just exposed me again. You know, out of your goodness of your heart, you wanted to help, which is not wrong. But you need holy hands to touch it. And so right. I meant it. I turned back to the Lord. I think we all turned back to the Lord. And and then later on, when I got called in to work on this again, it was late at night. I was getting ready to go to sleep and I was just tired. And and, and I got the text saying, can you please come downstairs to help us finish this track? And I said, uh, okay. But on my way down, I said, Lord, I want to pursue holiness. I want to exercise to experience you when we finish riding off, uh, finishing a track. And it was good. I came down and we all were in the spirit, touching the track with holy hands. And it all came together. And when we finished, we all had the peace from within. And it was definitely much better. And uh, I was able to also go to sleep in peace. I think everybody went to sleep <laughs> in peace. But you can see how easy it is for you're, you're doing yeah. something for it. And so easy for the common natural behavior to come in. And then all it takes is just a little thing to set us off. And, and all of a sudden, it is not holy, but it's defiled. Yeah. And so it's very good. This is a very, very practical word. Yeah. I, I like this, this um, link of holiness and peace. Mm -hmm. Because those two really go together. Yes. And, and Hebrews 12, 14 brings them together, right? He says, yeah. actually, first he says, pursue peace. Yeah, with all people and holiness, right. without which no one will see God. And yeah. also, First Thessalonians five brings it also together. Mm -hmm. He says, "The God of peace yes. shall sanctify you." Right. And, and those two really they go together. And if you pursue holiness, mm -hmm. the fruit of it will be peace. Yes. But if if in my life, whether it be personal. Oh, in the family, in the church, I, I lose focus of that goal. Right. The, the trouble will come. The, 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 the issue will come, the discord. And the Lord really chastised me this week about this matter mm. and told me, hey, um, if you want peace in your home yeah. and in your marriage, you have to pursue holiness. Right. And one very practical point that he showed me to take care of in mm -hmm. our marriage and in our home is what the Lord said in John 17, 17. I like it. it it's so simple. 17, 17. And he said it, sanctify them by your truth. Right. And your word mm -hmm. is truth. Yes. But this, this really, the Lord spoke to me. You want peace. You want unity uh, in, in your marriage, in your home. Right. Yeah. You want this uh, expression, then bring in the word of life, bring in the word that can really sanctify you all. Right. right? If we're so busy just with the things we have to do. And then when we are free, then we just get, we entertain ourselves with mm -hmm. just whatever we like. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it can could get into a place that is not very peaceful anymore. Right. But but this is so helpful sanctify them by your truth exactly so, since the lord spoke that to me i really said lord i one side i give myself more to pray that mm -hmm. the lord really opened the way for more yeah. truth yeah in the home right. and also really to bring the word of life into the center yes of our life at home like right really when everyone's together and we are having breakfast or so and right now there's vacation here in Germany for the kids. <laughs> then uh, just to took the Bible and said, okay, let's read Jude. Right. Uh, let's, let's read that together and pray that yeah. together. Or mm -hmm. Let's sing a spiritual song together. <laughs> and, and it was really good. It really yeah. brought sanctification. Right. And with the sanctification came the peace. Yes. So it's really wonderful. We, we don't need to compromise to mm -hmm. have peace 
Right. But we need to pursue holiness yes. personally and with all around us and, and take us on really together on this highway of holiness, as Isaiah calls it, right? <laughs> right. It, there's a highway of holiness. There's space to walk on it together. Exactly. And when we walk on it together and help each other, really the truth, the word of the Lord was such a help for that, to bring it in, we will also have a wonderful peace and building up. Right. And this is, I really want to encourage everyone, bring the word of life into your environment, into your, to your saint, to the saints around you, to your family. Right. To, to sanctify all of us. And, and then we will really have peace in our homes, a peace yeah. of God and peace in the church. Right. Exactly. Um, if there's no holiness and no peace, <laughs> we cannot be built up. Uh, it, it is impossible. Yeah. Yes. I, I like this verse, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Yeah. Right? Practically speaking, how how can we maintain this level of living? It has to be by the word, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm also reminded here in uh, Colossians chapter 3. You know, if you read through Colossians chapter 3, it gives us some very pointed details in terms of what it means to live a holy life. Mm -hmm. And what it means to live a common uh, or unsanctified life. Mm -hmm. The first, if you read the first part of it, it does show us a lot of things that can defile us and we could be definitely not holy. We'll be living a very common life. But then when you continue reading, it also speaks about some of the characteristics. What are the character of living with Christ as the new man, putting on Christ. And he's the one who is holy, right? But for this really to happen, if you go, actually, well, let's start with verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Right? Mm -hmm. so here again, you said this matter of peace, uh, which also you were called in one body and be thankful. You know, how I knew I was not holy when we were working on the gospel track was because there was no more peace, no more peace in my heart, no more peace in our conversations and in the atmosphere. And so we do need the word to bring us back to the peace because verse 16 finally says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, mm -hmm. Rich, not just barely, but richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, even the singing. Mm -hmm. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Yeah. It begins here for sure. The word of life that has to yeah. be in. Because otherwise, where do we get the food, the strength to take that stand to conduct ourselves in holiness? Right. And then after we eat the word and we have it dwelling in our hearts, then it goes on. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen, yeah. So, you know, in our eating of the word, praying with the word to write it into our hearts, but then once it's in our hearts, we still have to do the things, right? We still have to, right. kids, we still have to take care of the kids. But whatever we do, then we do all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? This yeah. is a very, very practical word that Paul has given to us. And we pray for all of our listeners that you would also learn to experience Christ in such a way, to eat the word, to let the word dwell in you richly. And then by faith, whatever we do, we do all in the name of our Lord, giving thanks yeah. to God. Amen. This is, if we live in this kind of a way, your life will be different because I know my life is different when I'm living in this kind of a way. Right. Peace when we finish the gospel track, peace in the family on our family trip, and and in peace when we serve together with the saints. So many areas, right? So. Amen. I like it as he says it here. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Yeah. Actually, it's so good to ask wisdom from God, right? right? Maybe it sounds for someone who listens to it. Okay, they got a lot of good ideas. Well, at <laughs> the end, God has to give us all wisdom. Exactly. Really, how to, how to work it out, 
we should yes. not use our own wisdom. Right. But how to bring the word of Christ into everyone's heart, mm -hmm. in our own and into our homes and into the church, we should ask his wisdom. Right. And, and then he says, I also like it, he says, in hymns and spiritual songs. Yes. It's also very good, right? That, um, instead of just talking about many things, why not really turn to the Lord together? Mm -hmm. and sing a spiritual song unto the Lord and, yeah, and right. get all of our hearts turned to him. Right. It, it, is, it is really good to do this every day, every day yeah. to, to fill our lives. He says it richly. It's yeah. like it just becomes a part of our everyday life, wherever we right. are. Right. And, and that will really help us to pursue holiness. Yeah. Because he says then after that, he says, whatever you do in word or deed, Mm -hmm. So this this foundation or this this um, strengthening through the word of Christ, yeah. it is really, really important. Right. And, um, then we will experience that we can give thanks to God the Father through him. Yeah. It's not by our own um, work that we now have this kind of living, but yeah. it's through him. Right. It's through him. And. This is really wonderful and it's possible for everyone. We, we really should turn away from the common things, especially the things we don't need to do <laughs> and, <laughs> and make room, make room for the word of Christ to dwell in us. It takes, it needs to, we need to make room for it. Right. Yeah, right. And, um, and, and then we will definitely have a, a blessing. And also in Ephesians five, I was thinking about this before. He, he says it in the same way um, about, about sanctification, about holiness. In verse 26, he says that he, Christ, might sanctify and cleanse her with a washing of water by the word. Exactly. Washing of water. Mm -hmm. and, and it's actually, in, in German, it's called like, like we did, it gives a meaning like there's a pool of water. Yes. Like it's not only like I wash my hands. I have a little bit of water and then it takes <laughs> a few seconds. But yeah. the washing of water, it's like really taking a bath. It's like you're really um, saturated. Exactly. And, and this, this will have, that has such an amazing impact. If it's the word, the water of the word, if it's a living word, it has this impact to sanctify and cleanse us. Yeah. And, and this is so necessary because the Lord is coming. I mean, the Lord is coming and we see the right. whole world. It is, it is really time. It is yeah. Really time. Yeah. Right. It's interesting. You bring up Ephesians here. Um, it's in that section regarding husbands and wives, right? Yeah. And uh, if you, if you come back to Colossians chapter three, Right after it says, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Where does it go? It goes right into our marriage lives. <laughs> right after that, it says, wives, submit to your own husbands as it is, as it is fitting in the Lord. Right. And husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter towards them. I'll tell you, when you are in the natural man with your spouse, with with my wife, if I'm not exercised and certain things happen in the heart, the bitterness begins to arise, right? And and so this is a very, very practical word, right? Especially for the marriage life. But the washing of the water in the word, we really need to be cleansed uh, when we're together with our, our wives, our spouses. And then, of course, the children, obey your parents in all things. Mm -hmm. For this is well pleasing to the Lord, right? And so, even in the matter of our parent children relationship, this is very important because it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged, right? So, as a as a father talking to my my adult children in these days, right? Even the more I have to be exercised to speak with holiness. Otherwise, it will provoke them to be mm -hmm. discouraged or it'll provoke him to be angry or whatever it's gonna it will not end well right so it, it starts in our home for sure 
And then even this matter, bond servants, obey all things your master according to, uh, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. I think this is also very important. Yeah. We, um, you know, most of us here uh, in Fountain Valley, I'd say almost everyone has to work, right? Working, you know, this is our livelihood. And, um, you know, that's 80, what, uh, no, 40 hours a week. That's actually a pretty big chunk of time out of the week where we just have to work. But here it's very good. Paul is encouraging us when we work, right? Do it out of insincerity of heart, fearing God. Right. And so this is also a wonderful opportunity for us to, to pursue, to perfect holiness in us while we work with the people. You yeah. know, oftentimes, you know, um, we walk into our work environment and sometimes it's not sanctified. People are using foul languages, right? I think that's pretty common now in the workplace and it defiles our ears, but it's good when you go into a work environment. I know for me, when I, I used to work in those types of environment, I would speak to the people. I say, hey, guys, when I'm here, it's not necessary for you to use any of this kind of work. I hear you loud and clear. Just speak normally. And so sometimes we do need to take that stand to sanctify the office work environment. Because if we don't, it'll just fill our ears. And then before you know it, those kinds of words will also come out of your mouth. And so when we're working, it's good to be exercised, right? And, um, and this is the environment, unfortunately, not unfortunately, but many people, we're all working. So it's good. And oftentimes when I drive to the office, um, I always pray, Lord, sanctify the workplace. Mm -hmm. Holy, the people that I'm working with, right? And, you know, and it's good. And I, I, I do have to testify when I have this attitude in praying, my relationship with my manager many times is sanctified because I'm exercised to be in this way. And that sanctifies my boss, not to use foul language and when i'm working together with my teammates um whether i'm working with sales reps or working with other technology specialists it becomes very clear to them that hey when we're working together with john it's 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 a little different and we need to shape up it's really good to see i mean to see their behavior change just because i'm there this is you know i'm not saying too much i i'm just living christ to be exercised, to do all things in him. And because of, I'm pursuing holiness in this way, it also sanctifies the work environment. No, definitely. So, you know, these, so these, these instances here that Paul wrote here in Colossians chapter three is very practical in our family life, in our work life. It'll be the same if you're going to school. It'll be the same in every environment, right? Because ultimately verse 23 says, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Yeah. Why is this important? Because verse 24 says, knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the reward of the inheritance for you serve the Lord Christ. Amen. We are exercised to pursue in this kind of a way, even on the job, then the Lord will qualify us to receive this wonderful reward in his coming kingdom age. Amen. Yeah, I think even the sequence mentioned in these verses has quite a meaning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? Um, right. First comes the marriage. Yes, because <laughs> if you pursue holiness, right, you really live through the Lord in that realm of your life. Yeah, then the next step would be the children, right? Yeah, and if all of this life at home. And in all our closest relationships is sanctified. Mm -hmm. It will be very clear that when you go to work, right. you will keep on living Christ. Exactly. Right. right. And, and this is really, I think the, the wisdom of God is also in the sequence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we should really, I have to ask myself, is that also my sequence? Yeah. Is it, is it really that my marriage is sanctified? Is it really right. the holiness is present? Yeah. Is, is the peace of God and the word of life that sanctifies right. yeah. in the center. 
Yeah. And, uh, if that is my, if that is our exercise, that is my exercise, then it keeps going. It, it keeps right. expanding. You can say, right. It yes. starts in the smallest, mm -hmm. then it expands from any kind of relationship we have, even right. to the relationships we have in the world through right. the job we, we are in. And, yeah. and this is really amazing because in such a way there will be glory to God right and also there will be a reward exactly right? if you think about a reward you think maybe about doing a great work for god i don't know some <laughs> missionary work or some other kind of work good works in the end here he mentions that even if you in all these parts of your life you bring glory to god you receive a reward right it's really the matter how we live and, exactly. and that's why this fellowship should really encourage us yeah not to leave any parts of our life even the most intimate the, the closest we have untouched yeah. by the holy spirit right but let us really bring them to god and say god fill these parts with your yeah. holy spirit let right. them not be untouched i want them to be sanctified that exactly. we can be ready for your coming as well right. this is really what gets us ready yeah and you know as you mentioned to build on this progression it's also really good if you if your marriage life your family life your home life is your exercise to practice holiness and then you're working it carries over into your working right I and mean, right. i would say in in where we live that that's like 80 percent of people's living that the, the part of the church life, the meetings and when we're spending with the saints, I did a calculation one time. And even if you're going to, to a meeting every single night, the most that's going to be is 18 to 20% of your life when you're together with the saints. And so I was just considering if the Lord trains us in this kind of a way in 80% of our life with the family, with the marriage, with our work life or school life, then it carries over to your church life Definitely. if if i'm not living a holy life at home or on the job then when we get to the church life okay maybe in the meetings we're sanctified but when we're together with the saints we're definitely not sanctified you just cannot flip a switch to be together with the saints and then you're holy right and and the biggest test for me in this area is oftentimes is when i'm with the saints serving together with, with them you know, this past weekend, we had a, uh, a couple who was moving into a new house. <laughs> and before they moved into the new house, they wanted us uh, as many saints to help out to clean the house, right? So washing the windows, wiping down, mopping everything, right? Everybody has their own level of uh, cleanliness, right? And so when you are cleaning and you think you clean fine, and then someone turns on the light and says, hey, you missed all this spot, and you go... Oh no. And how do we react? <laughs> they have different ways of putting, unpacking, putting things away and, and you have your way and another brother has another way. And, and then all of a sudden, how do you react? What's your inward condition? Are we, so again, we're doing a good work with the saints, <laughs> but is it holy? Mm -hmm. I mean, we can laugh about afterwards. We can laugh about all the different, you know, things that had happened, but it was really exposing to show us, okay, how much holiness did we live? And it was a good practical experience to exercise, to pursue holiness, even in serving with the saints to clean the house. Right. And then we also had to clean up the old house because they had to get it ready for sale. Stuff is all over the place and you still have to clean that up. And um, again, there's different ways of cleaning that up. And oh, Lord, it was, but it was good. It was a very good time of exercise to pursue holiness. Amen. And, um, and it really, the testimony by one of the new neighbors, uh, I found, we found out about this after the fact. One of the new neighbors happened to come in while we were all working. And when she left, she, she was telling the, you know, the sister, the, 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 the wife of this couple who's getting the house, she said, you know, it's really amazing to see all your friends from your church to come to go to work in this kind of a way. Where do you meet? What church do you meet? I think I want to. Wow. 
I, I think I want to come because it was to her. She had never seen that before. And I mean, we're, we're just cleaning and things like that. But but there was a testimony of Christ being displayed for her to sense something, to even say, hey, you know, where do you mean? I, I want to come. Um this, we didn't preach the gospel. We didn't say anything to her, but it was through our actions. Right. Holiness, right? right? So how we take care and how we coordinate with all the brothers and sisters in the church, it's the little things that become very important. Right. And um, how we treat one another, how we speak to one another. And, you know, we had brothers, we had sisters, we had young, we had old, we were all working away. And, uh, but it was much peace there was really peace there and um and many many opportunities so this is this is how the lord is training us to be Amen. Born, right? right not just like you said not in this big great work although you better be holy or you need some big and great work but it begins in the little things in life all these little things adds up if we are not living a holy life then how can we be holy when we serve god Right. And I hope, you know, with all of our listeners, spend some time to consider this word, to pursue holiness and to perfect holiness, because this is, quite frankly, what is required of us if we are to serve with our most holy God. Right? He says, be holy because I am holy for I am holy. How can we not miss this point? Right. And so it's been good. And um, we encourage all of our listeners and our viewers, be exercised to pursue holiness in the fear of God. Right. right. Amen. We are holy priesthood. So exactly. this is very essential. And maybe the most essential point when it comes to preparing for the Lord's return. Yeah. To it, gain his holiness in everything. Yeah. So uh, we really hope this is an encouragement for everyone. Mm-hmm. And also practical to put the word of life in the center of your home. Right. And to really uh, to be safe from what is common. Right. And, uh, to be sanctified in all parts of our living. Yeah. Then there will be much glory for God. And I'm very encouraged to hear that this neighbor saw this glory. And yeah. that is very attractive. That draws. Right. That's the best way right. to preach the gospel. Yes. <laughs> draw people to God. Yeah. Right. Very good. Yeah. So, yeah. So, all of our listeners and viewers, press on towards the goal. The Lord's coming is very near. So many things are happening in this world that is showing that His second coming is imminent. And so, uh, may we all press on together, pursue holiness in the fear of God. And uh, if you have any questions, we will encourage you, please submit them. Um, in our couple of episodes ago, we were answering questions there as well. So, you know, do let us know. We'd like to hear from you. All right. So, Christian, it was good fellowshipping with you again. Um, and then until next week, we'll see you next week to continue the podcast. See you next week. Everyone have a blessed week till then. Yeah. Yes. All right. We'll see y'all.